Okay, folks, it is 12 noon. Let's get this webinar started. Let me get my screens out of the way. Hold on. All right, welcome, everyone. This is the Design and Construction in a Private Cloud webinar. My name is Chris France, and I will be giving you a, a brief introduction here shortly. All right, today, the topics we'd like to discuss is first I'll give you the introduction, uh, a little bit about uh, my company, Advance 2000, as well as myself. I want to talk about kind of at the high level first, you know, what, what is the big deal about a private cloud and, and what's the difference between other types of clouds? And then kind of get into the meat of the, uh, the webinar, which is, you know, I like to affectionately call it how to, how to kill 12 birds with one stone, meaning if there's if uh, if you're running in a private cloud, you get at least 12 benefits. I think that's how many I can cover today. And then I'll talk a little bit about the economics of a private cloud platform and then how to begin. And then I'll leave about 10 or 15 minutes at the end for questions. And I would ask you, uh, while I'm talking, if you have a question, put them into the uh, the question here on the, on the webinar rather than wait till the end, because if you wait till the end, then everybody does it at once, and then the screen starts scrolling, and it's, it's really hard to, to read them as they're coming in. So put the questions in now, and I will uh, try to get them uh, at the end. And for any of you that signed up for this that did not uh, listen to me live, uh, we are going to record this, and it will be available on our, uh, our website and YouTube, and then we'll, we'll tweet it out and so forth. All right, first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. You know, I, I tell people if I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me to spell my last name, France like the country, I would be retired. So my name is, is Chris France. I'm the, uh, the regional president of Advanced 2000, but I, I have clients all over the country. And I've, um, I'm not an architect. I'm not an engineer. I'm not a contractor. I'm an IT guy. I spent 30 years doing IT. I've had uh, pretty much any, every role within uh, an IT organization. I've been an on-premise CIO at a large design firm in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm, uh, I guess I would call myself a cloud CIO now. I've written several uh, papers and uh, chapters in, in uh, cloud computing, BIM uh, uh, books and so forth. I speak and give webinars and so forth, and I uh, meet with clients regularly to talk about their business problems and, and how we can solve them with technology. So that's kind of the genesis of this presentation today. It's, it's a lot of benefits and discussions that I've had with clients in a real world scenario, and I'm sharing that with you today. All right, a little bit about Advanced 2000. We are first and foremost an IT engineering company. We own uh, two data centers in western New York near Buffalo. We have some, you know, eight or nine offices across the mostly the East Coast. But like I said, we serve all of North North America. And, and given this technology and a lot of our clients that are North America based have uh, international operations, we're starting to kind of get into international uh, support as well. We are not an Autodesk reseller, but we are a Dassault reseller. And I'll kind of get into that a little bit later. And I'll also show you a quick demo of uh, SolidWorks. We are not a SolidWorks uh, reseller, and we'll get into that. Like I said, we serve North America. We have uh, many certified engineers. We've got about 160 people in the company. We've been in business 25 years. We are providing a lot of what I call managed services, cloud computing today. But um, we got our start, and we still do today, what I call traditional on-premise. IT, you know, hey, I need a phone system or I need a server, desktop, whatever, installed in, in my location, and we still do that. And like I said, we own two data centers. We don't outsource to Amazon or Microsoft or Google or anything like that. We uh, we own our two two data centers, so we can uh, bring those economies of scale to our clients. Our markets, of course, today we're talking about. Uh, architecture, design, construction, and so forth, uh, AEC industry, but we also serve other industries, manufacturing, healthcare, government, education, financial, and legal. And that's just some of the majors that we actually have some application uh, domain expertise. But, but pretty much any of our, even our small clients in any industry that needs computing, you know, managed services support, we will support them. All right, that's what kind of what we do. So let's, let's talk about a private cloud. What is the big deal? Well, first, I guess I want to say, um, since I'm a, a, quote, cloud CIO, I'm going to have you all sit in the, the CIO's chair today. It's not just about one application. It's not just about Revit or Katia or networks. It's about everything coming together because all of this stuff costs a lot of money. 
it takes a lot of discipline to keep it running, to keep you secure, and that's kind of what I want to, you know, I'm coming at you at the big picture today. Um, everybody wants faster IT delivery. Hey, you know, eight months is too long to deploy anything nowadays. I want it now. You know, what? It's not. If I don't get it in days, you know, I'm frustrated. We want more capabilities. You know, for less money, and um, the cloud is able to do that. And let me just uh, stop real, real quick here uh, and talk about public clouds. You know, I, I want to thank all the public cloud providers because they do a lot of marketing and they've got a lot more money than we do. You know, the, the Microsofts, the Amazons, the Google, you know, you've got Amazon uh, Web Services, AWS, you've got Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud. Those are what I, are what I would call public uh, cloud offerings. I'm not going to get into a lot of details on that, but they're very um, focused uh, and you generally get to them over the Internet. You know, Microsoft's cloud generally has Microsoft's product, unless you go into Azure and you can put your own applications in it, but it's still Microsoft. Uh, Amazon, you know, you're, you're pretty much infrastructure and, and Google and so forth. So what we're talking about today is having the, the, the best of both worlds. You can get the economies of scale, you can get the, uh, the data center, uh, the protection that you can at these public clouds, but then you, you actually get to customize it to meet your business, or you may have some custom applications that you can't run in, in another uh, cloud. And what that allows the CIO to do is what, what I call IT 101, is we try to centralize everything we can. Because the more I'm distributed, if I've got people and servers and storage and phone systems all over the country, all over North America, it's very costly to, to keep all that running. So if I can centralize all of these IT assets into one data center, protect them, uh, get really good assets, then that drives down the cost and, and lets you know, a typical firm get more IT capabilities for less money. So you know, firms, people want nothing less than the mobility of the tablet. I don't want to be chained to the office. I want to go where I want to go. I want to work where I want to work. I want to be able to afford it. I want to be able to run the Windows and PC apps that I'm familiar with or that my company is standardized on. And of course, I want the security of a mainframe. I don't want to be hacked and, and we'll get into some of that. So that's really the, the benefits of the private cloud is, is putting everything into one data center, protecting it, and these are the types of uh, the benefits that we're going to see. So these are the, the 12 birds that I call with, you know, that I'm killing with one stone. So if I have a private cloud, that's going to positively affect your, these are, I'm just going to re read these real quickly and then get into this in details, your workstation computational power growth. You know, it'll, it'll meet your real-time collaboration needs, whether it's the same firm or with your supply chain consultants, et cetera. It's going to solve a lot of your data growth and protection problems. It will help you consolidate your IT infrastructure, like I said, centralized, you know, one-on-one. -on -one. And then it will help with your regional office consolidation. You know, many of the larger firms have multiple offices that they're trying to deal with. And then you'll have, uh, you know, general purpose cloud. Um, like I said, if you have if you're running a, on a Microsoft Office 365, that's pretty much all it's running. What happens if you have other things um, and you want to run? Of course, you want the full mobility, IT automation, and support reduction. Uh, the IT needs to be up, and the more you can automate and monitor and, and so forth, the uh, the more positively it affects your productivity. Of course, you want your business continuity. You want your business to keep running no matter what happens. You know, floods, hurricanes, whatever and you want it to be secure. And I'll, I want to also talk about uh, one aspect of security, you know, lock VDIs and ransomware. Uh, I know several firms that have been affected by that, and I want to, I want to address that. And then talk about a, a simulation farm or rendering, rendering farm uh, as, as part of a private cloud. Okay, let's get into it. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you this. We'll spend a little time on this workstation computational power, but I kind of want to tee it up. And... Uh, you know, a lot of I don't, I don't care what design application you use, what construction application you use. If it will run on your PC, on on your computers, it will run in a private cloud. Um, some of our most common um, applications that we're running today in our data centers are Revit, Katia, Navisworks, and I'm even going to show you some SolidWorks. and And I'm going to give a shout out to our um, folks, uh, friends over at CAD Dimensions. They are a SolidWorks reseller based in Syracuse, New York. Uh, since we're, we're not a, a reseller, I, I can't get demo versions of the products, but uh, they contributed a demo uh, SolidWorks for today's uh, webinar. And, and so what, what, this is, what this is doing, computational power. So every time these applications, the uh, software vendors release a new release, it needs 
more CPU, more graphics cards, more memory, more, more, more. It's, it's just getting ridiculous because, you know, we, we used to be able to run our PCs for, for three or four years. Now it seems like every two years we've got to replace our desktop and uh, to keep up with these applications. And so what, what, what that does is you think about it, um, when I have all of this, you know, some firms spend, you know, $1,500 on their PCs, you know, some firms spend 5000 you know, we've, I, we've got a few clients that for a few users are spending 10000 because of the graphics needs on these, on these uh, workstations. So you think about it, they're PCs, for the most part, sitting in your office, on your desk, and I would say maybe the physical hardware, 10 to 12, maybe 15% utilized. And what do I mean by that? Well, you, when, whenever you're in meetings or you're at home sleeping or not working, or traveling, or job site, or whatever, that hardware is sitting in your office, not being used. You know, can you imagine running your firms at a 12% utilization? You, you'd go out of business. And so what we said, well, gosh, if we could, if we could take all of this unused computing power, and let's push it all into a data center, and make it available to everybody when they need it. So if this one individual user is out at the job site, or they're on vacation for the week, that $5,000 workstation is not sitting idle, somebody else is using it. So what this private cloud, and, and, uh, and I'll get into this, so the virtual desktop infrastructure allows us to do is drive up the utilization for this desktop computing power. So that means when I'm not using my, my virtual desktop, then somebody else is. And so let me just kind of define this whole virtual desktop infrastructure or VDI, you might have heard that. It's no longer a PC because the PC is just one aspect of it. It's, it's sitting on your desk. With a virtual desktop infrastructure, you actually have a, a big server in a data center that's running many desktops, and it has uh, the memory, the CPUs, the graphics card all kind of aggregated together, and it kind of shares it out. And so you need that those the server resources in the data center, you need the network, the connection between where you are in the data center to be you know, optimal, and then you need some kind of, I, I call it a cloud access device. It could be a, a tablet, it could be your old PC that you have in your office. Uh, more, more often than not, people are, when, they're, when their PCs age out, they go and buy uh, laptops. Uh, so that, you know, maybe eight, $800, $1,000 laptops so that they can go mobile and they can still get into their cloud and work and go to a job site and so forth. So that, that higher utilization that we're seeing with a virtual infrastructure requires less hardware. You know, the VDIs cost approximately 50% less. So instead of going out and buying all these PCs every two years, you invest in the, the VDIs and that, that kind of lowers the, uh, the cost of, of computing. And so, you know, and it gives you that mobility benefits what I'll get into. And so, that um, yeah, that that VDI is um, opening up a lot of doors to mobility. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna actually go and show you this. So I'm gonna hold on, just real quick. This is my desktop, and I'm I'm already logged into a remote desktop, and I'm gonna show you. Hopefully, this will come up okay. Um, I'm looking at that over the. Um, you're looking at it over the webinar. I test this a hundred times and I might have to log in again, but it looks fine. Hold on. I'm going to have to re-log in. I might have went to sleep. But if I can't bring this up, this is kind of the, the, the demo gremlins. Every time I go live, you know, there's always a, a problem that comes up. But anyways, it's locked. Okay, let's see if this goes in. Okay, it, 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 it just locked up on me. So this, this demo, this is a VDI. And I'll say it a few times, but the people on this, uh, listening to this uh, webinar, you're able to, we're going we're gonna to give you a free uh, demo if you, if you want it. These things are in high demand, so all we ask is that, one, you're ready to test when you get it, but just shoot me an email, I'll have my contact information at the end, and uh, we'll get you scheduled to uh, test one of these things. So just so you know, you'll get a, a demo, a, a VDI demo similar to this. Uh, a 32 gig, this is a 32 gig machine suitable for running just about any design application. It's got four cores in it, and you can see here that I'm not hardly doing anything with it right now. 
Um, I did want to show you the, the performance of the internet. So I'll just tell you, I won't run a speed test locally. I've got the um, standard Time Warner cable internet, 50 by 5 service. I'm in my home office, and but I'm, I'm running a VDI that's sitting in Western New York. So here's the speed test I'm going to run while we're, I'm talking. It's in Western New York here, the data center. And look here, the Advanced 2000 is the ISP. I think I'll give us a radar. Very happy ISP. All right. And I want to begin the test. So I'm sitting there. Now, if I, if I do need to get to the Internet for whatever, do research or whatever, um, you know, we can, we can make this thing, you know, wide open as you want, as much as you need. So I've got, you know, five megs upload capabilities at my house or, or maybe in your office. But when I'm in the cloud, in the data center, I've got here, what, I'm, I'm 200 megs. You can do a lot with these kind of resources. And so I'm on a laptop. And I can do the same thing whether I'm sitting in New York or in, you know, Ohio or in Texas or in California. It doesn't matter. You get the idea. So it's, it's fast. The, um, the SolidWorks, I'll just, I'll just, and see, this is the beauty of a, of a private cloud. I can get one cloud to run all of these applications. Let's see if they come up. And I have a vanity assembly. I'm just going to kind of spin it around a little bit. But, um, you know, so this is, this is SolidWorks running. You know, I got Katia. You know, if, if you want to build a next wing fighter, there's things you can download. But, you know, this is Katia. A lot of, um, I'm seeing a lot of this in construction um, for fabrication, a lot more uh, detail than, than a Revit and so forth. And, you know, same thing with, with Navisworks. You know, I, I, I really don't care. Oops, I spun it too far. I really don't care what I'm, I'm running, and of course the old, you know, Revit. It's actually moving too fast for me, but you, you get the idea. So, and in, 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 in this, all this, these applications now are sitting right next to the data source, so on a 10 gig network, and so it's fast, it's safe to central. And, uh, and I'll get into some of that. All right, so let me let me get. That's just a little little teaser of uh, the VDI capabilities. All right, so we'll kind of keep going through this. So now real time collaboration. Okay, I've got my desktop in the in the cloud, and I've got all my server and my my data. Now I can actually start working with other offices. You know, how many of you have tried to move data around in your office, and it's just it's just too slow. And then try to go home, and then you got to come through a little VPN, and it's just it's just ridiculous. And so there's depending on the application you're running, you know, Revit's got some Revit server collaboration, or C4R, Dassault has what they call uh, file collaboration servers, and you know, so they're very uh, vendor specific. And um, so you end up having all these multiple collaborations for for different things. So well, we say you know we'll call them rich clients. So these 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 applications that need 32 gigs of RAM, we say, let's, let's put everything you need in one data center, like I just showed you, including the data, and bring the people to the data and the apps, not bring the apps and the data to the people. So you could see here in this diagram, you know, I don't care, I'll have, I'll have my architects maybe that are sitting in New York, same firm, I'll have some of my engineers in, in California, and, and maybe uh, I've got some, uh, my guy in Dallas has some, some time available, structural guy, I can let them all log in and work on their application. So an engineer would have an engineer, you know, VDI, you know, application set, an architect, and, and so forth. So it, it works like you're sitting in the same office. And even if you are only a one office firm, you have all this capability at your fingertips. So I think, I think our smallest client right now is a three-person uh, structural firm. And they've only got one office, but they get all this capability the same as a, you know, thousand-person firm. All right, the next thing, and so a lot of these, these, these benefits, they don't all happen overnight. You know, uh, firms will, will pick one or two or three that they really were having issues with, and they'll implement those, and then they'll kind of build on it. Build on it. So if you're, you know, been in the, in the private cloud for, you know, a year or two, you end up having all these benefits eventually built out. So the next thing, you know, after I'm collaborating within my firm, I want to collaborate with my supply chain, you know, or my consultants or my contractors or whatever. And so this adds another security wrinkle. And like I said, IT is very complex. You know, who cares if I can run all these applications if I could get hacked or the data can get stolen or, or whatever. And so you've got to 
but if you have have all the stuff in one data center with all of the extra extra security built around it, you can invite these. Uh, so I mentioned before these these architects, engineers, and structural guys all part of the same firm. Well, private cloud doesn't care what firm they're in; they could be separate firms as well, and have them log in. So this could be you know architects in New York, one company A. Uh, MEP, you know, engineers in California, company B, and the structural guys, company C, all logging in, working, just like they, you know, would if they were sitting in the same location. Now, you've got to work through some new challenges like the ownership of data, making sure that, you know, the engineer doesn't change the architect's model and vice versa, but, you know, those can all be um, um, set with, act, you know, Active Directory permissions and other types of technologies. And, uh, you know, so I call this a sandbox so that all the applications can be used and shared. And, and in effect, so that's kind of the, the first phase. You build a, a private cloud for a project and you invite all these different disciplines together, the same project, so they're collaborating in one cloud. Well, now what we're starting to see because of the popularity of this private cloud concept, company A says, hey, I like working like this. I want my own cloud, my own private cloud. Company B says the same thing. I want my own cloud. And see, so they, so now we have, you know, three separate clouds, and now it's just a matter of connecting clouds. Say, all right, well, who's the lead lead on this project? Let's, uh, okay, we'll we'll store the data at their place, and then let the other clouds connect to it in a secure fashion. So this could be, we've had this audited by third party. Uh, it can be very secure, and so that's that's another thing to remember that you know. IT and IT infrastructure, again, I'm in the CIO chair, it costs a lot of money, it's a lot of discipline, people have to come in and, and do the same things every day or you'll have a breach, and something like this takes years to build. And so if you have it in place and you continue to build it, you build it once, and you continue to improve on it, lock it down, and, and so forth, then it's available for use. I, I, I call it a, like an IT high rise. You know, People can rent a floor or two floors or, or whatever. And so, all right, the next next uh, bird that we're going to kill. I've got my apps. I'm collaborating. Now I've got a data growth problem. These applications are just, it's, it's huge. They're, they're generating so much rendering data and, and image data. It's just very hard to, to manage. You know, cr you know, I need more storage. How many CIOs have gone to their, their principal saying, I need to get a bigger SAN. I need, you know, 10, 10 more terabytes. I need 50 more terabytes. And the problem is when you have this data all over the place, I need 10 terabytes in New York, and I need another 10 in LA, and I need another 20 in Dallas. And if, and it's just like I said, it's spread out all over the place. And so when having everything centralized and protected, you can have the data mirrored, you can have it on generator, you can buy it in bulk, you know, maybe you buy, you know, uh, 100 terabytes, and, and you can drive the cost, you know, way down, and get state-of-the-art, state-of-the-art storage technology. And so I say, you know, yes, yeah, people say, well, yeah, but you're putting all your eggs in one basket. I said, I said, that's true, but you're, you're putting it in a very well-protected basket. You know, so what's happening is you might have multiple baskets in your firm, but they, they've got holes in it and it's, and they're not as protected. So not every office has a SAN, has a mirrored SAN, has two backups of, to remote locations, you know, on and on and on that we can provide as, a, as part of the private cloud service. IT infrastructure, I, I've kind of touched on this already. Uh, the vendor clouds are good. They do what they said they're going to do. But I'd really like to put my workstations in, in the vendor clouds. You know, I, there's very, I don't know of any of them that are allowing you to put them. Amazon's giving you some uh, graphics workstation capabilities, but not to sew, not, not Autodesk. And the application uh, complexity, I'm getting uh, calls all the time saying, I've got uh, uh, 400 plugins that we've developed and I can't run them in this this cloud you know can I run them in the private cloud yes I said if it will run in your um, environment it will run in a private cloud and I tell firm owners you know look it's just this simple 20 offices of IT cost more than one put everything in one office make it a really good office and then make it available to everybody centralize when you can distribute when you have to Regional office consolidation. You know, a lot of firms are benefiting from this uh, just by centralizing their IT. They, they, they're able to reduce some of their office lease expense. You know, instead of needing 10,000 square feet in a, in a pricey downtown location, they can get, you know, 5,000 or 4,000 square feet. And they don't have to get, you know, HVAC and power to run all their computer systems because the data center is already handling that. 
and you're uh, you're you're reducing you know it's giving the uh, the people mo more mobility. You got some people that are on the at the job site four days a week. You know why give them an office? You know permanent office uh, if they're only in one day a week kind of thing. And and this is the another big thing. You know how many of you have worked at a headquarters and how many of you have worked at a regional office? It seems like the headquarters always have more resources. They have the data center, all the IT people are in the headquarters, and they just have more services. And so with a private cloud, because everybody's centralized, then everybody has the same capability. So every regional office has a SAN, everybody's on generator, everybody's on UPS. So you know we've had some, some clients that had local offices in uh, you know New Jersey, New York, and were affected by Hurricane Sandy. They were underwater but the data center was still running. So you have the same, you know, all the regional offices have the same capabilities as uh, what I call the mothership. This is huge, general purpose multi-vendor applications. Like I said, what if I use another vendor software? Okay, I bought into the Autodesk cloud, but now I wanna run SolidWorks or Dassault. Can't do it, how about Rhino? No. And uh, I, would, I would rather, you know, have, I would rather just deploy these apps so that my my designers can use them rather than build all this infrastructure all the time. So like I said, run on your computer. Uh, if it'll run on your computer, it'll run on our private cloud. So I showed you one desktop that was running SolidWorks, Navisworks, um, Katia, and Revit. And you can run whatever you want. Oracle, SAP, your financial systems, new format, whatever. Full mobility. I don't, I'm sure you guys have, 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 have heard similar studies to this, but 79% of CIOs, uh, like myself, want enterprise apps available to mobile users. And people say, well, that's not, a, you know, some of the firm principals say, I don't really care about that. I want my people to come into the office. I, I know what they're, they're doing. We actually see the studies show you, your productivity actually goes through the roof and employees are happier. Because if you have a, an hour and a half commute in LA to get to the office, you don't have to do that every day. Or you're at home and now you gotta come back. Or you're at the job site and you're waiting on uh, to get into something. Uh, or you have a you know sick family member, whatever you can you can still work at home and be productive. So this is kind of the future. You know, it's it's here for many of our our clients. And 54% of these applications require Windows desktop-based clients. Um, SolidWorks, Revit, you know, Katia, and only nine percent of them are truly optimized for mobile delivery. So, you know, we could have said, well, let's just wait until I could run Revit in a web browser or Katia in a a web browser, then we wouldn't need so much, you know, centralized data centers. But until that happens, we're going to centralize in a data center. So, you know, the nine to five commute are gone. You know, people are working all the time. They're able to shut it off. They can go to the beach and work, but they're able to work and meet client deadlines. They want full application data access. They don't want to, you know, you know, have everything go through a little. I call it a straw of a VPN connection to try to work. Uh, some of our clients. Um, uh, was it? I forget the uh, the company. The um, Chris Hobb down in um, Alexandria, Virginia. That's one of his his um, strategies to hire the best talent. I don't care if you're in in DCs. You're in you know California. You're in Texas. I can get the best talent no matter where they live. They don't have to come to DC and work. Uh, standard of living's higher. You know, stay where the standard of living's low, and so forth. Uh, Twelve hundred architects is his firm. Uh, productivity through the work, I, I mentioned that, uh, you get more work uh, with less time. So you can get, you know, 40 hours, you can get your work done. And, and, and some firms are actually looking at this as an employee benefit. You know, we'll give you a laptop or a stipend for a laptop. Um, you can go mobile, you can take care of family, you can be flexible. We've had some, some clients that went on maternity leave and they were able to, you know, work, design from home, you know, while they're going through that process. So uh, full mobility is, is the future, it's here, it's, it's the way to go. IT automation, this is more from, uh, you know, if there's any uh, IT techies in, in the room, you know, CIO, you know, this stuff, um, IT, IT is very complex, you know, Windows crashes, you know, applications crash, networks crash. Uh, the more I can automate, the more that discipline, I don't have to re rely on humans, uh, the more monitoring so that I know that a you know, switch is bad or a, a VDI goes offline, as soon as it happens, we can get it back online. Uh, we're able to, um, you know, because we have a 24-7 operations, we have a, a NOC, Network Operations Center, that watches all these things. And we do all of our maintenance usually in the middle of the night. 
and we can keep things ready to go. So, and when the majority of the work work grade hit work day hits, you know, we're back online with all this automation and support reduction. So, um, monitoring, upgrades, backups, VDI refresh, you know, all this, you know, IT heavy lifting, you know, we're able to automate. And this takes time. Like I said, it takes years to build all, all this automation. But once you have it, you can use it. And um, you, it drives up the productivity by driving down outages. Because when you can't use your computer, you cannot work. Another question I get a lot is business continuity and security. Uh, it's probably at least once a week I am getting an RFP from one of our clients that says, hey, we're getting asked all these security questions, IT questions, and we need your help to, to answer it. A, a typical firm, I'm, I'm reading these things, you know, a typical firm, say under 500 people, wouldn't be able to implement all of these things, whether it's for a, a government entity or a financial institution or whatever. So we said, well, look, if you've got this private cloud that has all of this security and business continuity built in, just the fact that you're in our quote unquote, you know, IT high rise, you benefit from it. So put your, put your eggs in a very secure basket, basket. You know, our data centers, uh, our clients have done government work. We've been audit, audited. We've been uh, pen, I'll call it pen test, penetration test by independent security firm. We were part of a DHS grant. If uh, you want more detail on that, I, uh, you know, reach out to me. I don't like to put all that in the public um, to, to make sure that we're as secure as possible. You know, we are not a billion dollar firm like, like an IBM or, or an Amazon, but we still need that same level of, of protection and so do our clients. You know, we can encrypt at rest or in transit the data and we have data center redundancy, we have two data centers, we move data back and forth, and it's very costly to provide all this capability at all locations. So don't provide this capability in one location and give everybody access to it. Like I said, bring your people to your security now rather than the security to your, to your people. We're almost to the end here and then I'll, I'll open it up for questions, but you know, part of the, the security and, and business continuity, I wanted to talk about ransomware. I'm, I'm aware of, of, um, some companies that have been hit by ransomware and just so if you don't know that it, what it is it basically it's a virus that gets into your network it could be on your servers it could be on your your desktops and it, and it basically encrypts all your data you can't get to your data you can't read your models or do your client work unless you pay them a ransom hey you know it might be x x amount of dollars per you know desktop it could be you know end up being 50 100 200,000 dollars and a lot of firms pay that because the productivity hit is 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 greater than that that cash expense and so you know knock on wood never say never but you know none of our managed services clients in the private cloud were affected by ransomware you know, we were, you know, we, we make sure that we have, you know, automated, you know, back to my other slide, automated antivirus updates. You know, some client, we, we highly recommend locking down your VDIs uh, to the uh, admin only so that end users can't mistakenly put a virus on or, or application that, that slows them down for, for certain things. But, you know, let your laptop or your, you know, your local device be kind of wide open, but keep your your uh, your work desktop that you need to work locked down and secure and keeping those viruses off you know backups on a separate network you know a lot of times like I said people will pay these ransoms and they'll get the key to unlock their data but guess what all the permissions are gone so all that secure HR data that you have everybody's salaries and performance reviews everybody can read it you know so this is a, a huge productivity and a lot of firms don't even know all of their permissions and which files should be locked down um, because they were done you know 10 years ago so this is this is no joke um, ransomware is a is a bad thing and you do not want it um, in your in your network so um, it's it's hard it's hard to keep everything up to date and like I said if you don't have it all distributed all over the place you can keep it in one location and keep that up to date simulation farms or rendering farms a lot of firms are, 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 are doing this now um, small firms can't touch this capability it's basically um, I want to do whether it's, you know all these applications have different rendering uh, capabilities Revit's got some capabilities uh, you know you got V-Ray mental ray and there's always new ones popping up and they end up rendering for you know on the only hardware they have which is their desktop or their PC or their laptop 
and they, they, they really can't afford a farm. Well, what firms are starting to realize that, you know, if, if they're saving money by consolidating to a private cloud, yeah, they can take all that money as savings, but more, more than that, they might take half of it, you know, 25% of it, and invest it in new capabilities that they couldn't afford before. You know, rendering seems to be some of the first ones that they go with, as well as uh, video conferencing is kind of a close second. And so, you know, they can get, they get basically, uh, dedicated workstations or BDIs, whatever is best for the, the, the particular rendering application, and um, set it up and, and make it available in the cloud right next to all your data stores so that you could use it from wherever. So this 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 allows, you know, even that three-person firm has one or two extra desktops that they, that they use for rendering, uh, and it's easy to do. We're starting to see more and more simulations. The SO's got some good simulations tool, tools. I think they call it like Delmia and Simulia that helps uh, simulate the actual construction process and, and uh, fabrication process and all that. Um, so you're going to see more and more simulations. Um, today, you know, I think Autodesk has, uh, you know, a simulation uh, cloud that you can you get with, you have some credits uh, from your subscriptions, but you got to, here again, you got to move the data out. You got to take your models or whatever, move it from your office to another cloud. And then you got it when it's done, you got to move it from there back. If everything's in a private cloud, it's already in the data center. You just load it. It's on the same network. Comes back on the same network. It's all good. So an office of one can tap into a simulation farm. So back to that comment I made about remote offices. You might have a a guy sitting like me in their home office on a 50 by 5 cable modem that there's no way that he would be able to use a, a simulation farm. But but now now he or she can because it's part of the the, the corporate private cloud. And people say, all right, how much does this stuff cost? It sounds, it sounds too good to be true. Well, you know, it, it costs a lot of money to set up an, I, you know, an IT infrastructure. So from a CIO's perspective, I look at this and say there is no better way to provide this level of IT capabilities than a centralized private cloud. Because that's what we try to do, centralize you know, IT 101, centralize when you can. And so just to kind of throw out some some um, ranges, you, you guys, uh, everybody's, you know, um, environment and needs will be different. If, if one firm only wants to do a project, they're going to have one set of costs. If one firm only wants to implement three of four of those birds that I talked about, that's one cost. If they want to do all 12, then that's, you know, that's more capability. So there's hard costs and soft costs. And we've actually got an RO, ROI uh, routine that we kind of go through if, if you need help figuring this out. But you know the soft costs. You got the time to move the data up and down. Friday afternoon, you know, upload all your files. Some firms that could take four hours, and then Monday morning, download it all to the whole design team. That could take another four hours. So that's all eliminated. Um, commute time to the office. You know, some firms still make you come in. You know, to the office five days a week, hour and a half commute, hour commute. That's fine. You can still do that, but you don't have to do it more than once. Or maybe some firms are starting to go. Okay, you only need to come in two days a week or three days a week. So that's it's adding to the employee happiness, flexibility, uh, coordination meetings are easier. You can you can do them online, and, and or you have fewer fewer of them because you're designing in real time. You know some of the hard costs. Obviously, if you can't afford it, this is something that you wouldn't do. But like I said, typically what we've seen, uh, if you have um, particularly if you have multiple offices, the the savings potential is even greater. If you're about to expand your company into multiple offices, um, you need to look at a private cloud because you'll avoid cost. 40 to 60 percent less is kind of the norm. Like I said, 20 offices of IT cost more than one. That's kind of where that savings comes from. And the the monthly cost, it's it's like it's like paying rent. Um, it ranges between 100 to 300 dollars a month per person per month. And that includes 24-7 support, the data center, all the computing equipment, the infrastructure. And it depends on the ranges there, depending on the term of the contract, uh, how much data you need. You know, do you have one terabyte of data or do you have 100 terabytes of data? You know, so it, it varies. Um, like I said, some firms will take these savings and spend them all on new capabilities. Sometimes they'll take some of the savings and they'll they'll uh, open up new offices or invest in you know design or construction talent and some of them will invest you know part of it in new IT uh, travel for the design the co-location team you know I know a lot of firms that will physically co-locate the design team or the construction team during a phase in the project and they'll put them up in hotels you got plane you know 
plane fare and so forth, all that's you know gone away. Now it's not to say that you totally eliminate travel. Um, I think it's important to have face-to-face -face meetings, develop those working relationships, but you can greatly reduce the travel with the private cloud. Hardware reduction. I meant I mentioned the uh, the PCs. That's just one aspect. But you know you don't have to you know buy servers anymore. You know all that network switch within the in the data center. All that's part of the uh, the infrastructure, if you will. So you don't have this you know three thousand dollars or five thousand dollar PCs to buy every couple of years. You you know you might be able to buy like I said a thousand dollar laptop and keep it for three or four years you know, until the wheels fall off. And the, the software costs usually stay the same, and we'll, I'm sure we'll, this will come up, but, you know, Revit still costs the same amount, whether you run it in a private cloud or you run it in your office, same thing with Katia and so forth. But at least you can uh, get, get the savings, you know, elsewhere. How to begin? Well, well I, always, I always say walk before you run. Start slow, you know. Think about these, these benefits that I kind of talked about today, and if you want, like I said, I'm going to post this uh, recording. And uh, if you want to watch it again to kind of, you know, get the wheel spinning, you know, pick the, you know, high value birds. You know, some people say, I really need to collaborate. I need to really work with my LA office. Let's, let's start on that. Some people say, I got this project going in the hospital or whatever. I have no way to, to, pr to bring this design team together. And some people say, hey, my, my phone system's crashing. Can you host that in the cloud? Or I just need my email stable, whatever. Start slow and, and um, build on it. And for those of you that have never run a uh, design workstation out of a data center you know, and, you, and you want to, like I said, we have that free demo uh, available. You can play with it. If you need SolidWorks, uh, get with me and maybe I can get our friends at CAD Dimensions to uh, extend a, uh, an eval to you. And um, solve your IT problems first, you know, and then focus on new opportunities. And that's where a lot of our firm, our clients that have been in the, the cloud for, you know, one or two years, they've got their IT under control now. Now they're looking at, hey, how can I do things better and different to serve my clients? And some of them, things they're willing to talk about, and some of it they want to keep, keep confidential. All right, just to recap before I open up for questions, like I said, put in your, uh, your questions into the box there, and, and I'll get to them. Uh, gave you an introduction of uh, myself and Advanced 2000. Talked about, you know, what's the big deal of a private cloud. Uh, told you how you can kill 12 birds with one stone. Talked a little bit about the economics of a private cloud and then how to begin. So now let's, uh, let's open it up to questions. Like I said, this is my contact information and um, webinar attendees will get a free free demo if you want that. All right, I'm going to open up the questions here. Okay, recording. All right, what what about software licensing? How does it work? I get this question all the time. Um, depending, it depends on the software vendor for one. You know, Autodesk is is a, a big, a big um, install base in our, our cloud and they require you to still maintain your own license what I call that BYOL bring your own license to the private cloud so you still have to and there has to be a network license most of the firms are going to the uh, most of the software companies are going to you know network based type of licensing getting away from the standalone uh, I think Autodesk still has that You're, technically I can get a standalone license to work in the cloud but that's a no-no legally they say it must be a network um, Microsoft, on the other hand, they, they, they give you choices. You could, you know, buy the software, like a lot of firms have a, a volume licensing agreement, and there's a few restrictions about using your volume license or your enterprise agreement in, in the cloud, and, and we kind of uh, know what those restrictions are. But um, for the most part, they don't make you, you know, double pay and we can use your licenses that you already own with Microsoft. Other uh, companies like this three-person firm, they don't want to have to continue to keep buying Microsoft and paying software assurance. So what, what they do is because we're a, a service provider, they have a what they call a SPLA license, service provider licensing agreement, where we can rent you the Microsoft software on a monthly basis. Um, office or Visio or project or, or whatever and and if you need it this month then you pay for it if you don't need it you can shut it off um, the design application providers they haven't got there yet you know Autodesk I, I can't I can't buy Revit as Advanced 2000 and rent it to you that's a no-no they still maintain want to maintain that customer relationship same thing with the so and, and SolidWorks uh, but that's generally how licensing works but like I said if it will run on your 
um, environment in your office, we can get it to run in a private cloud. The um, the license server, you know, we've run it locally in, in firms' offices, and we've also run it in the in the data center. Some of these software vendors allow us to virtualize the license server. Other vendors like to so do not. So we have a little physical PC or, or hardware with a, I don't know, a little dongle or something on it in the data center. Um, let's see. Any, any more questions here? Yes, the questions of the demos look choppy. Um, that's that's because of the uh, GoToMeeting webinar software. Um, it looked it looked fine on my screen. It it, it did did fast because we're actually you're actually going through a, a screen you know presentation to see this. But like I said, um, request your own demo and you can experience it yourself. And you can you know do it at your office if it's on a fast internet connection. You can try it at home. Uh, you can even try it off of. Uh, off of your you know 4G smartphone. I've done that a few times and so so of our clients. Um, do I have to throw away all my existing IT? Some of it's new. Um, no, you don't. We um we we definitely don't want you to to throw out you know good working assets. You know that 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 doesn't make sense. The the plan is is is, is develop a migration uh, approach. Uh, many times we can we can you know transfer your assets, you know, whether maybe 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 you just bought a brand new data storage SAN, we can move that to the data center and you can still have access to it to be able to to uh, connect with other resources that you don't have, maybe like a VDI or whatever. Um, we've had, you know, the abilities to do uh, a hybrid cloud. You know, some people said, oh man, I wish I would have talked to you a year ago. I've already got Panzora and Nusuni in, in place. It's no worries. This is IT. This stuff will age out eventually and you can kind of migrate to the cloud, you know, when, when needed. You can consolidate. We've got some, some hybrid clouds going on because half their company is still local on premise because they have new hardware and Panzoras and the other half is in the private cloud in our data centers and we just put a Panzura in the data center and everybody works. So there's there's a lot of ways to skin the cat and I'm, I've only got an hour with you today to go, to, to go into all those details. Is this a rental or do we own the assets? No, you do not own the assets. Um, it's it's a rental. What I've been talking about today is, is, a, is a service, the monthly service. But we do have, uh, Advanced 2000 does have a co-location facility where if you do have your own assets or you want your own assets, you can still put them in there and then we can join them to the same virtual network as your as your cloud assets. So that's, like I said, that's more of a hybrid type thing. We can do that. Um, are there additional, let me see here, pop this up. Yeah, there's a lot of questions here. I think I'll, I'll also post these uh, these questions too. Um, how, how am I handling point clouds this is from Scott? Um, we, we are, like I said, and that, that kind of goes to this other question. Are there additional benefits beside the 12 you talked about? Yes, but I've only got an hour. And some of them are NDA. Firms don't want to talk about, uh, don't want me to talk about. We keep all that confidential, and some, some things are very, we're very generic. Uh, point clouds, um, the way, you, like I said, if it runs on your computers, it'll run on ours. We've had clients that are doing the LiDAR point clouds where, generating terabytes of ter terrain data and they just uh, so if they've got a fast connection they they can upload all the the data if they don't they're in the field they they boxed up a hard drive and, and overnighted it to the data center and we loaded it but then once all that point cloud data is in a central location then all your point cloud applications that you use to manipulate create your Revit, Katia models whatever it's all there it's available to anybody so you're just moving the screens um, Redundancy, uh, circuits, um, like I said, if um, you're right, if the connectivity to the cloud goes down, then you lose access to your, your resources. Um, that's no different than if your circuit goes down in, in, at your corporate headquarters, your regional offices are cut off, same thing. So what we do to mitigate that is because I have this in one location, I can have multiple circuits. It's like an insurance policy. If I want to pay for that extra circuit from a different carrier, I can do that. But what people are realizing, some of the smaller firms in particular, hey, I've, I'll pay for one circuit in my office, but if it goes down, I've got my 4G card I can get on. I've got my cable modem at home. I'll just go home and work for a little bit, or I'll even go and visit my client, and I'll use their internet connection and log into the cloud. You know, So there's 
because the and this happened in Hurricane Sandy, you know, we had some of our clients that had their cloud, their private cloud in, in our data centers and their office was down, it was underwater, and their internet circuit was down, and so they just moved to dry ground, got onto a different circuit, and boom, they're up and running. And you know, like if if and many of them had their phone systems in the cloud, so they were still you know, their phone systems were still taking calls and it was still getting, people were leaving voicemail, so the clients didn't even know they were down even though their office was underwater. So it, it, every risk that you uh, can think of, there are ways to mitigate it. What's the best, what's the best uh, known method for getting existing legacy data to the data center? USB drive, um, multiple different ways. Uh, we've got, uh, I think like a 10 terabyte internet connection uh, I mean, gigabyte internet connection into the data center, so we've got very fast. Most firms will um, will replicate the data kind of in the background, trickle it in over a week or two. That's one way of doing it. We've, like I said, we've 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 had clients um, put all their data onto a hard drive, ship it to us. We do that. So we've we've done different ways. We've done uh, sometimes they have file replication software like Double Take or whatever. We'll use it. There's um there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, a lot of different ways to, to do that. Um, and I noticed the demo was on Windows 7 node. All the VDI nodes all set up in Windows 10 as well. Windows 7 is what our demo environment set up is now. A lot, a lot of our clients are still on Windows 7. They opted to to not go to Windows 8. Uh, they're they're going to Windows 10. But like I said, we could we could put any image on that. I think it's just recent that um, I haven't kept up with Autodesk for a while. Revit and some of these apps weren't uh, Windows 10 ready. And you don't want to go until they're ready, but absolutely. Um, I've actually got a, a Windows 10 VDI that I run with Advanced 2000. So you can put uh, Linux on there, whatever application you need, whatever operating system you need, we can we can we can do that. Is the is the software included in the monthly cost, or is that additional? Can we use our license? I think I answered that. Um, the design software is not included. You have to use your own license, but the uh, the infrastructure software like VMware or Citrix and the, the data storage software and all that monitoring, all that's included, the IT infrastructure. Um, okay, let me see. Anything else? How much bandwidth does my office need? The uh, so how we, We've got five more minutes. I'll take questions, and then, uh, then we'll wrap. Um, Bandwidth, what we, we like to see is at least uh, uh, a meg and a half per user, um, and that's per, per concurrent user. And so that is a considerably less bandwidth needed than, than say, a Revit server or you know, some of the Panzeras and we're actually moving data because we're not actually moving the data. The data is staying stationary or moving the screens and the mouse, mouse clicks of a high um, graphics application. Um, let me see. Assuming crashes from Carl, assuming crashes are less likely but not impossible, that's correct. I mean, the software, if it crashes in, in your office, and we found Revit bugs. If, it, if there's a bug in your office, there's going to be that same bug in the cloud. That's true. What, it's still IT. What are the chances of a server crashes and what happens to individual user connection and open apps? The, um, there's a couple questions in there. Uh, server crashes. Um, Windows does crash, you know, you know, we, we lose volumes occasionally and now Windows 10 or uh, Windows Server 2012 has gotten a lot better uh, that we, we you know, we're, we stay up on the latest things, which is a, a chore in and of itself, but we also have, um, I'll call it at least N plus 2 redundancy. So I'm not going to get into a long discussion about virtualization, but these servers that you're running on, I, I could have, you know, 50 or 100 servers running on up one piece of hardware. Well, if that one piece of hardware crashes, your servers don't go down or they don't go down for very long. They, they might, we, we might be required to reboot them depending on the applications, but we move all those running servers to backup hardware. We have multiple hosts. So, you know, if, if this three-person firm had their server crash and it was dead, dead, they'd have to go out and buy a new server. They would have to get somebody to reinstall the operating system, they would have to restore all their data and hopefully it was it was good. And you know, if they're lucky, they're back online in three or four days. In, in, a, in a private cloud with redundant hardware, you, you might be down you know, a minute for a reboot or, or less. A lot of times we can move running servers and you don't even know it. Um, 
And so the, the individual users and apps, you know, sure. I mean, you know, Windows will blue screen occasionally, and sometimes that happens. You, you know, you know, you call the help desk. A lot of times, the you know, VMware or Citrix is getting better at being able to restart the the desktop. So, um, like I said, IT is still IT, but we're able to get all of the latest updates, all the latest software in one location and let everybody use it. So it, it works a lot better. Like I said, we've got a lot of firms working like this, and I've had clients tell me I am never going back to the old way. This is so much better way to work. And um, the, um, I think I've got time for a few more questions. Printing, how does printing work? That's, of course, in the, the design and construction industry. Printing, we still use a lot of paper. It's, it's, it's cake, no, no problem. So it actually gets better. You know, if you're running on a VDI in the, in the cloud and you've got your data in the data center, we set up what I call cloud print queues or cloud print servers, and your virtual desktop spools the, the plots to that, and then that thing will zip it down to your plotter in, every, in, in any office. Uh, the cool thing that a lot, a lot of clients like is we can publicize you know, all your plotters nationwide now. And so the only problem, you know, you just got to, you know, educate the end users are used to depleting, uh, pl plotting to their New York plotter. Well, now they could plot to L.A. or Texas, Dallas just as easily, and then sometimes they send it to the wrong plotter. So, yeah, printing, Xerox, local printers. Uh, there's also the desktop capabilities to, to, to hook to your local if you've got a desktop printer. There's a lot of printer print, printings handled. Um, Let's see, does the monthly cost include packaging of the master software images and changes to that? It could. Um, I didn't get a lot into the support, but um, we've got different levels of support or we can create a custom package. Some firms have their own IT people and they want to continue to do this and, or they have a BIM manager or a BIM group and they want to continue to, to package the software and, and do it themselves and that's fine we, you know we give them access to their cloud it's their cloud they have admin rights and they just keep doing what they know what they normally do or if they these small firms like I said three five ten twenty people they don't have a dedicated you know BIM manager that does all this you know we can provide that on a on a, on a an hourly or a, a contractual basis we've got a, a what I call a, a BIM manager on a cloud and an engineer like I said we've got you know, 100, probably 120, 130 IT engineers, you know, to serve you. So you've got a big IT department. You just tell us what you want to do. Obviously, you don't want to double pay for things. If you've already got the resources to do something, then you do it. And if you don't have them, then, then we'll do it. All right. Um, what are some, okay, I mentioned this a little bit, but what are some of the, what are some of the, uh, that you can talk about the 12, you know, you talked about 12 benefits, you know, what are some of the others? Well, I, I would say go to, uh, you know, the Gartner Group 2016 predictions that, that just came out, you know, that's really what firms are looking at. Okay, what's the next thing, you know, there's uh, 3D printing, there's, um, you know, we talked about point clouds, there's virtualization of networks or software defined networks, um, Internet of Things, you know, all of these people, all these technologies that are coming out, you can put them into a data center and get these kind of capabilities to uh, to make your business better, serve your clients. All right, I think that's that's we're about out of time. I appreciate everyone for attending. Um, here, get, let me get this out of my way so I can see what I'm doing here. Again, here is my my contact information. Reach out to me. We can set up many follow-up meetings and talk about your particular information or you know problems. And uh, like I said, if I'm gonna I'm gonna make you request this demo, I'm not gonna automatically send it to everybody that registered because one, I want to make sure that you're available to test. We'll schedule you because as soon as you get it, you know we will take it back in about 10 days because we got a queue of, uh, of of businesses waiting to test these things. So if you want to test this, let me know. We'll get you scheduled and get it out. Thank you all for attending and um, look for my recording and we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye.